In this video, we'll look at a multiplicative grouping system and then a historical example, the Chinese numeration system. So this is a slight improvement on the simple grouping system because we no longer need to write out um, all of the different symbols that were needed, for example, in the Egyptian system. All right, so let's say you had uh, nine of you know, a symbol like the scroll, all right, so nine scrolls. Well, that gets a bit tedious to write out all nine of those scrolls. Um, so in the multiplicative grouping system, they came up with a way to just record that there were nine of those symbols rather than writing them all out. So in a multiplicative grouping system, we still use a symbol for each value one through nine. These are called the multipliers. Then there are symbols for select other numbers, often powers of tens, and you can kind of think of these as um, similar to, you know, our, our place values, like ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, all right? And then we would pair, in a multiplicative system, we would pair these two pieces of information together to describe how many of each of those select other numbers, all right? So, for example, the number 40 in the Egyptian system, which was simple grouping, we would have had to write for heel bones to show that. In a multiplicative grouping system, we would write 4 as a multiplier, and then we write, would write a symbol for 10 to show that there are 4 tens. Now the symbols would vary depending on the numeration system. So here's an example. Uh, this is a made up one using Greek letters, okay. um, but you can kind of get the idea from this. All right, so first of all, um, if we wanted to write the numeral for 45, then we want to look at uh, the, the, the tens and the ones, first of all. All right, so this would be four tens and five ones. And then we would use symbols to represent these. All right, so here we've got some Greek letters. So first of all, uh, four tens, we would write the multiplier four and use the Greek letter delta, and then we would follow that by the symbol for 10 to show uh, what this is, for what's, for tens. All right, so we use the symbol phi to represent 10. Now the ones is the only one that's a little bit different. We will write a symbol for the multiplier for five, and this is the symbol epsilon. But then we don't usually write the symbol for one, right? We usually skip that. So you can write it. You could write alpha to show that this is five ones. But what's more common is to just see nothing at all, okay? And then it's understood that that last one represents ones. Here's another example. Let's try to write 3,619. So we need symbols to show that there are three thousands, six hundreds, 1, 10, and 9 ones. Okay. Okay, so 3, we're using uh, the Greek letter chi to represent 3. Then for 1,000, we have the Greek letter omega. Then 6 hundreds, so we have theta, represents 6. And then 100 is rho. Then 1, 10, this would be alpha for 1, and then 10 would be uh, phi. Okay. Now here too, sometimes they would skip the 1 if the multiplier is a 1. Alright, so if it jumps from like 100 to 10 or something like that, um, then know that that's 1, 10. Okay, so that alpha is kind of optional. And then finally, nine ones. So we can write iota for nine. And then we can write alpha for one. Or just leave that off, and the meaning would be um, understood from that. Okay, here's a historical example the Chinese numeration system. So here's how they would write five tens and three ones, or in other words, the number 53. Now they wrote vertically. But the idea is the same. So there's a symbol for 5, then a symbol for 10, and that represents 5 tens, and then a 3, okay, and that's the multiplier, but there's no number after it, 
So that's understood to mean ones. Um, on the right, you see there a figure with the symbols, the, the numerals that they would have used. And they did use a symbol for zero. This was added kind of later on in the development of this system. But what's interesting is that they didn't recognize zero as a number. Um, they did kind of use it to show, you know, a space or something like that, the absence of something. Um, but they, they didn't consider that to be a quantity in the same way that, you know, six or nine or something like that was. All right, so let's try it out. Find the value of the Chinese numeral. So first, let's record the value of each symbol. And I'm not even going to attempt to describe what these are. I'm just going to write the values. All right, so the first one is a 6. And then the next one is 100. And then we have a 5. And then the symbol for 10. And then the symbol for 4. All right, so now these come in pairs, and we read top to bottom. So pairs of multipliers, and then some quantity of tens or hundreds or something like that. So this would be 600, and then 5 times 10 is 50, and then 4 with nothing after it is 4 ones. All right, so that's the multiplicative part. All right, rather than writing that hundred, the symbol for 100 six times, we're writing it with a 6, and it's understood that you multiply 6 times 100 to find the value of that group of symbols. All right, that's the multiplicative part. And then the grouping part is this adding all of, all of these together. Um, the fact that it's grouping by tens instead of writing everything out like with tallies. Okay, and this is a simple grouping from there. So we would add after that, and this would represent 654. All right, here's another one. This is the symbol for three followed by the symbol for 1,000, and then the symbol for 7, and then 100, and then 2, and 10, and finally 6. All right, so reading these in pairs and multiplying, this would be 3,726. All right, and one more. We have the symbol for, uh, let's see, 5, and then 1,000, and then 6, and 10, and finally 5. All right, so in groups, we have 5,000, and then 65. Right. Now notice here, there is no 0. So this may have been an older way of writing um, this number right, without a zero as a, a placeholder or something like that. Okay, let's try going the other direction. Write Hindu Arabic numerals as Chinese numerals. All right, so 65. Uh, break this up into ones, tens, hundreds, etc. And I'm going to start to write this vertically. So this would be six tens and five ones, but we don't need the symbol for one and then we write the Chinese symbols for those. All right, and there it is. This would be the Chinese numeral. All right, how about 183? This would be 100, eight tens, and three ones. And then write the corresponding Chinese symbols. Okay, so there they are, the symbols for one, 100, eight, ten, and three. And then finally, one more example, 8,749. So this is eight thousands, seven hundreds, four tens, and nine ones. All right, and there's my attempt at those symbols for seven, or for 8,749. Okay, so that's the multiplicative grouping system. And notice that that's a progression from both the tally system as well as the Egyptian system, which was simple grouping. But we have a few more improvements to make before we get to the Hindu-Arabic system that we use today.